welcome to the Wellness Plus podcast. I'm your host, Karina Rachel, and I'm joined today by Athena Jezik. Athena, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me again. So as a massage therapist working with people over the years, Mm -hmm. I'm just guessing that stress is maybe a common problem among the people that you work on. Mm-hmm. Um, and then to me, I definitely notice that when I haven't gotten a very good night of sleep, I tend to feel more stressed out throughout my day. So I'm just wondering if you can share a little bit of insight on reducing stress, getting better sleep, is this a common problem that you see among the people you work with? Yeah, it's, yeah, the stress particularly, but sleeping does come into that, you know, issue as well. You know, that's kind of a tricky question because what's happening in today's world, you know, a long time ago, people would get up with the sun and go to sleep with the sun and they were in this kind of a rhythm thing, but mm-hmm. there's been more and more things written about you know, when we have different lights in our room on, that that's, we should be in a dark room when we sleep. We shouldn't have a lot of light. There's a lot of light that comes in from the outside, if we, depending on where we live. Mm -hmm. Um, There's the Wi-Fi frequencies, the smart meters, if they're outside your home, all of that stuff is showing more and more to show disturbances in sleep patterns as well as Mm. other things. Um, So, you know, it is it is an issue for sure on that. And then people are under a lot of pressure, just society mm. pressure with if they have to drive in traffic. And uh, I think a lot of stress that people um, also don't maybe recognize as something stress producing. But if they have the television on, there's it seems like there's never civil conversations. It's always just mm. yakking and yakking back and forth and yeah. high degree of stress in their voices Mm -hmm. that, you know, there's just so many things like that, that I think it wires the body Mm -hmm. to a point to where when it's finally asked to lay down and relax, that it's just, you know, it's kind of like still flopping around. It's not quite ready to do that yet. Like a fish out of water for a while, just flopping around, Mm -hmm. waiting to I think about sleep. those uh, those little wind up toys that mm-hmm. you would like wind it up and then you set it down on the table and it starts walking or something like uh-huh. that. And so sometimes when I lay down in bed, it just feel feels like, like that. I'm still wound up like that little yeah. toy. And even as I'm laying there, my brain is still going at a hundred miles an hour. Yeah. And you know, there's just this kind of uh, you know big conflict between me consciously going, okay, I need to go to sleep. I need to get up early. I need Mm -hmm. to fall asleep now. And then my subconscious just, I'm still thinking about work. I'm still thinking about whatever it is. Yeah. Um, And And you're in more stress. Yeah. I have to get up. (laughs) Exactly. And then you're more stressed out by this like inability to fall asleep. Um, And I think that's becoming increasingly common for people as we live these more you know, more and more fast paced lifestyles. Yeah, it, it, it is. And that's a bad pattern to get into really, because it does affect us physiologically. You can't really heal when you're in that kind of a stressed state because Mm -hmm. the body is geared toward fight or flight. And so when you're in fight or flight, you're looking for snakes to stomp on or run from Mm -hmm. or somebody to punch and run because you're always feeling like you're in danger and the body doesn't really distinguish between you know, it's just a stress response. Right. You know, it's a hormonal kind of thing. And, and so we have to start to learn and pay attention to what it is that we're being triggered by. Mm. And it's an emotional thing in a lot of ways that we are going to have to get a grip on. Because just to lay in bed and then have your mind be really wired, it's pretty hard to shut that off when it gets to a certain degree. It's mm-hmm. just kind of like it... I don't know, it goes on auto flow or something. Right. And then it definitely is kind of this, um, like, snowball effect. Like, the longer you're laying there wanting Mm -hmm. to fall asleep and you can't sleep, the more that I become stressed out. Yeah. Um, Well, yeah, and I do that sometimes. I usually, I find that I go to sleep a lot later than I want to. Um, But that's because I sit at the computer before I go to sleep, and I think that that you know, stimulates things a little bit. Mm. I do turn off my Wi-Fi. I unplug my Wi-Fi every night. 
and I do not have a smart meter on my house. Um, of course, there's neighbors that do, but that's the little things that I can right. do. Um, and I don't have my phone or anything like that in my room, and I do try to get it as dark in my room as possible. Mm -hmm. But I find that if I have one of those nights that I just can't, you know, go to sleep, and instead of tossing and turning, I'll just get up and go sit at the computer a while and figure that maybe my body doesn't need it and try to find time to catch up at another time. Just kind of exhausted, but I don't know if that's what everybody can do, but I can because I have a very flexible schedule, so mm. you know I can I can do that. But that is a problem when people just lay there. Um, one thing they, that could be done is just getting like you were mentioning that you have a image of stuff. They say they used to say to count sheep. Right. You know, I used to do that. I get about number three, and then the sheep turned into something else. But um, you know, I. I think that to just get in touch with the body and feel the toes and feel the stress in the toes and then just keep moving up the feet and, mm -hmm. you know, try to focus on the body, try to focus on how the body feels. I think that's a better route to go because then you're getting back in touch with yourself, mm -hmm. like yeah. what's happening, not just trying to quiet the mind, but quiet the body and quiet the system and quiet the hormones and mm -hmm. quiet all of that so that you can be, you know, come down to more of a a little more of a relaxed state. Right. Um, and that kind of makes me um, think about, you know, like kind of that concept of meditation where you're like, okay, I'm going to try and clear my mind. Mm -hmm. Well, could there be something that's more difficult than that? Mm -hmm. You know, to me, what I find is a little bit easier rather than trying to clear my mind and think of nothing is to put my attention on something specific. Mm -hmm. So bringing it into the body, for an example, um, I'll try to focus on my breathing and mm -hmm. focus on really like feeling and maybe even kind of visualizing my breaths as they come. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, like you said, the the kind of mental scan of the body mm -hmm. where maybe you just start noticing like, how do my feet feel? How do my knees feel? How do my hips feel? Um, I think bringing our focus into the physical environment and mm -hmm. especially into our own physicality, into our mm -hmm. body, um, is a great way to kind of clear the mind, so to speak, but giving yourself something to be focused on. Because I know yeah. if I just try to think of nothing, then it's, it, it you're just like work. opening your brain up to think <laughs> of everything else. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's really wise uh, and good words that you said about getting into the physical. What I notice about when I do my therapy is people, Some it, 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 I have to really like bite my tongue because it bothers me and I eventually I try to figure a way to do it because I don't want to offend anybody and they've got their own way of relaxing, but it bothers me when they just focus on their breath. Or it bothers me when they go into like a hypnotic kind of a thing with their mind because then they're actually not really getting into the body. Their mm. focus and attention is on the breath which it's nothing wrong with that, but you're not really getting into the body, whereas opposed to if you're going down and saying, what do my feet feel? And like, oh, man, there's pain over there, and my joints are a little sore, and mm. wow, there's tension. I didn't realize that, letting it, that tension go. Because just focusing on the breath is fine. You're focusing on your breath, but you're not focusing on any kind of releasing of actual tension mm. in the body. And meditation is different than body working when you're d dealing with the physical and the, all that. It's just right. different. Your focus is different. People that meditate don't get the kind of results that people that don't meditate when they're on my table. Interesting. That's I know. I thought that was really interesting, too. And people that just go into their breath, they never really go down. They, they, just, they just don't go down into a deep, deep state. Interesting. It's constantly just... You know, it's like, oh, please, you know, I'd rather have <laughs> snoring than breathing like right. that. <laughs> because when you're because when you're doing some kind of body work on someone, you want them to sink into that exactly. relaxation. Yeah. So you can pay attention to the breath. Like if you suddenly feel like like it's a release of a breath, then you're letting go of other things in the body. Mm -hmm. But where it's just this concentration on blowing the abdomen up and, exp you know, all that kind of thing, that's a whole different ball game. And I personally don't think that that is the best way to really take yourself down into a more relaxed state. 
Um, sometimes music in the background or something soothing in the background is, is a good thing. But just to find the music within yourself and mm. breathe normally and naturally and, and just notice how do, the, how do the guts feel? You know, how does the stomach feel? That's where a mm. lot of stress is carried. You know, am I move around a little bit, poke your body, you know, f feel the organs a little bit, feel the pulse, just kind of get to know yourself and then just become aware of where the tension is mm -hmm. and let it go and feel the breath then as it's releasing things out. And that to me is a lot better way of sinking down into that state where you can actually turn the stress hormones off. But you wow. have to get into a deeper brainwave pattern to be able to turn those off mm -hmm. and it's not from what I've noticed and observed it doesn't come from concentrating on the breath for a whole hour during a session it you know so it to me it wouldn't help to put people into a, a as deep of a state of relaxation as maybe it could right by changing the focus you know it's interesting that you mentioned the you know, the scanning of the body and, and noticing where we're holding tension. Mm -hmm. Because for me, when I start doing that, almost always I'll realize that either like one of my hips feels a little funny and I realize like, oh, you know what, I'm kind of laying a little awkward or I'm a little lopsided. Mm -hmm. I kind of adjust my body a little bit. Yeah. And I'll notice like, okay, this feels much more neutral, you know, or mm -hmm. whatever. I'm not turned or twisted a certain way. Yeah. Um, and then almost always, once I get up to my face, I'll notice that I'm clenching my jaw mm -hmm. or something like that, or that I'm like furrowing my eyebrows. Maybe not so much when I'm trying to fall asleep with the eyebrows and yeah. stuff, but, but you, you know, notice. if I'm laying there thinking real hard, I will have my brow is furrowed and usually mm -hmm. my jaw is tight and I'll notice that and immediately go like, oh, well, there's, well, there's a big thing I can do right now yeah. just to... Maybe I relax that, maybe even bring my hands up and like, you know, touch my jaw a little bit. Yeah. And, and, and you're definitely right that once you can help the body physically to let go of a little tension mm -hmm. or relax certain muscles that are just like clenched and, and yeah. firing, um, that it does help me sink into that more relaxed yeah. feeling. And then I'll notice that like my breath becomes... A little bit easier, you yeah, know, yeah. and a little bit more gentle, and mm -hmm. um, it's you're you're not forcing like forcing to to look at something or do something, and actually, what you're becoming more aware of by doing that is the level of unconscious stress that mm -hmm. you have. You know, I notice that too sometimes, where I just suddenly realize my face is all like awry. It's just like, and and it's like, wait a minute, you know. So I, I relax it out, and I'm thinking, oh, my gosh, that was a lot of unconscious stress. You know, yeah. how long have I been holding that pattern? So that's a really good thing to note that, you know, and then you do you do notice your breath, but your breath is different. Mm -hmm. It's like just breathing to breathe. It's breathing to give the oxygen rather than breathing like in an exercise mm. of or concentrating on something. It's letting everything go and the mind and body connecting and then moving into a different vibration. Right of everything. So, yeah. So we sort of force, like force ourselves into thinking about something when we want to not think about anything. <laughs> right. <laughs> well, I think it's interesting that you mentioned, you know, the, the oxygen component and, you know, can you maybe speak a little bit to like, what is the role that oxygen plays in our body's ability to relax? Because I definitely notice that when I slow my breath down, and I just think about taking deeper breaths mm -hmm. and taking in more oxygen. And I'm a big visual person, mm -hmm. so I like to kind of like envision the fresh air coming into my body. Um, what is it that's so relaxing about, you know, taking in a full breath of, of oxygen? Well, we need the oxygen for our brain, and a lot of times we don't have, you know, it's short of oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, our whole body, you know, oxygenation is good for the body. And in fact, if we do oxygenate ourselves. I understand that, that cancer cells have a hard time living in, they're, they're anaerobic. Mm. Um, and so aerobic, so, you know, I mean, so it is good to keep the oxygen coming in. I don't know really anything about cancer, but I have just heard that. Yeah. So don't take me at my word on that. Um, 
but the breath is is really definitely important. But what we don't want to do, in my opinion, is to just concentrate on that breathing until the body is relaxed down to then feel the breath in a more natural, more right. organic state than in a state of, well, I'm going to relax, so therefore I've got to follow my breath. Because I'll tell you, when I feel the body and people are sitting there doing this this stuff, you know, on my table, just this deep breathing, it it's like, God, every time you do that, you, you're just tensing up areas that you have no clue that they're even tense mm-hmm. because they're they're not conscious of the unconscious stress pattern in the right. body. And then you can also begin to make a new neural net pathway. When you're aware of that conscious stress, you can begin to release it, kind of like when you're working on your posture. Pretty soon, the posture becomes more natural and if you feel yourself falling out it's easier to get back into Mm -hmm. it's more effortless well same with the unconscious stress patterns once you recognize that then the unconscious stress patterns when you start to feel them coming you can relax them out much quicker and so then you're going to take your whole body into a state where you're not triggering these stress hormones for everything that you do you can drive down the street and if someone cuts you off it's not the flying finger right away. It's just kind of like breaking and letting them in and maybe saying a few words under your breath. But it's not like this right. big panic thing and reaction thing that goes on. Mm-hmm. So that's that's what I would say. Sometimes, though, if you're twisting and turning in bed and you just can't get to sleep, sometimes it's just better just to get up and try to read a book or something. That'll put you to sleep pretty right. fast. And, yeah. You know, or... or it's best not to probably get on the computer when because that is a stimulus and that blue light, you know, if, unless you put it on a different lighting, mm-hmm. that all kind of triggers things through the eyes and all that to yeah to kind of disturb the sleep pattern. Um, and but, I I notice that if I'm um, if I'm working on the computer late at night. Mm-hmm. I will almost always end up staying way staying up way later than I normally mm-hmm. do. Or if the TV is on at night. Oh yeah. And and it'll be something thing. where like I can feel really, really tired and then put on the TV and then somehow I'm like wired and then I'll be up for several more hours. And I'm yeah. like, how did I like I was really exhausted and mm-hmm. then it's like I can notice that yeah, being in front of a TV or computer, it just like wires yeah. me up and then I'll end up staying up way later than I ever would have imagined. Yeah. Um uh, and I think people that work in front of computers all the time that they they just get so much stimulation, mm-hmm. you know, that in some ways our technology is extremely helpful and wonderful, but in some ways it's, you know, it's not that good. And I think, I don't know because I'm not an engineer or anything like that, but what I've heard is that a lot of these frequencies can be changed so that they're more conducive to the human frequency, mm-hmm. especially these G5 waves that they're putting up all over the place. That's going to fry us. It's bad, bad waves. They they affect the, um, from what I've read, they affect the ability of the oxygen to actually even be absorbed into the body because they're changing wow. the frequency of the oxygen or the water. It's that vibrational stuff is can, you know, mm-hmm. when you go small enough, you can see the effect of that. And so if people would get more aware of that, then we can demand, you know, to, to change these frequencies that we enjoy Wi-Fi and all those, just change it to another frequency so we don't get bombarded by it Mm. and cause, you know, cancers and that kind of thing, which is, that's a whole nother topic. But that's definitely a very um, deliberate, in my opinion, it's very deliberate and it's um, with with ill intentions Mm. toward the human race. But that is, people have different opinions on that. But if people were to research out, I think they would find that there's a lot of of value in mm-hmm. <laughs> that statement. Right. And whether <laughs> it's intentional or, or coincidental. Maybe they have really no idea the negative health impacts and it just so happens <laughs> that the blue light frequencies, yeah. the Wi-Fi frequencies. I mean, when you talk about the electromagnetic frequencies from our different mm-hmm. devices, for a lot of people, it can be, you know, anywhere from five to 10 devices in your room, your phone, your computer, a gaming device. I know a lot of people with three or four gaming devices, not to mention, I mean, all of those different, you know, electronic and Mm -hmm. especially the Bluetooth and Wi-Fi things. Um, And it just adds up. So I'll kind of try to keep my electronic devices on a, um, 
you know, on a power strip so that I mm-hmm. can just like click it all off at night. Yeah. And there is definitely this sensation when I click off the power strip and the little buzz of the computer, the little buzz of the TV, the little light mm-hmm. on the TV that's like on even when the TV is off. I mean, I feel like I can notice all those things calming. Yeah. And it's almost this feeling like, oh, okay, yeah. now I can breathe and, and, even just that one element of the of the light, you know, yeah. when I first, you know, turn the, the light off or the TV off, it's almost like, you know, if I've been in front of the screen for a long time, it's almost like it's not even dark in my eyes. Like you can still see all the yeah. light. But then after a couple minutes or 10 minutes or sometimes 20 minutes, I'll start to actually like feel like mm-hmm. it's dark. Yeah. And sometimes I'll even like wear a sleep mask and stuff because I be- I feel like I'm hyper aware of, you know, the light coming in from under the door, yeah. the, you yeah. know, moonlight coming in from outside, all of those little things. Um, it's, it's like I've become hypersensitive to them in a way, mm-hmm. uh, but it definitely feels like I can relax much more easily when I start to take all of those different electronic frequencies in light yeah. out of my room, out of my space. Yeah, yeah. Well, those frequencies do have an effect on us. Um, there's some people that have done some terrific research on, on that stuff. Mm-hmm. But I, I just unplug my Wi-Fi every night. Mm-hmm. And um, I actually have a wire to my computer, but I, it won't work with just the wire, so I have to still turn the Wi-Fi on. I don't know how that really works, but I uh, feel better with a wire to my computer yeah Um, Yeah, definitely but oh actually no and I remember too my phones don't work without the wi-fi on Mm. and I have it but I have it down for a really small you can change the adjustment on it somebody did it for me they change it so it's like 10 percent instead of a bigger percentage but I have to take my phones in too because I find that I can't always text people and maybe it's because I don't put any apps on it I don't know uh, I leave my phone at home it's I didn't I don't always bring it with me but those sorts of things they do they do definitely have impacts and if we can just turn them off mm-hmm. or take the batteries out or shut them down right. unplug the Wi-Fi at night and then if there's a, a smart meter uh, I don't know not everybody can opt out of those things but if there's a smart meter close to your bedroom it's really a good idea to have those gone um, in fact, that's something that is, uh, there's a, some concern that the, you know, the smart meters can cause house fires. Mm. And the way that things burned in California, it, there's some people suggesting that it was the, something was triggered and wow. that started all those house fires because they say it was a forest fire, but oddly, I've never seen a forest fire only burn houses Mm-hmm. and not forests. So there's things like that out there that frequency-wise that I think we all are going to start to be needing to pay more attention mm-hmm. to for our own health and for our own sleep. Right. Because if we don't get that good, deep, deep quality sleep, we're going to go kind of goofy. Right. We have to have some sleep. Mm-hmm. And we don't want to take sleep medication because then you have to take get up medication you know I mean you really don't so if people are Mm -hmm. really up against the wall and can't sleep and they turn off all that stuff and they still can't sleep maybe to get over the bridge there are some good herbs out there but I would caution people to get on any kind of medication type sleep aids or any kind of chemical sleep aids because then you're gonna just create another beast that you have to take Mm. care of and then you can't go to sleep without that and then you can't wake up without that and then you're Mm in a worse yo-yo situation so if anybody's out there wondering about that they can just try these just turning off the electronic the frequencies and making the room as dark as possible and Mm -hmm. you know doing the best that way maybe an eye pillow even or you know whatever you call those things um yeah because we do need our sleep and Mm. then yeah (laughs) try not to be up too late (laughs) right (laughs) So, right. yeah, and it disturbs things like it will disturb our, um, you know, our, our stress patterns are worse when we're like that, like you mentioned. Mm-hmm. But then our, our whole system of digestion and all of that gets changed, too, and we're not wow. digesting. And what I, I understand is that there's a huge connection with the gut, the function of the gut, and how the gut's working in the brain. 
and our mood. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, when we're, even if it's subtle and we're not really recognizing it, if maybe if our liver's a little congested and we're not able to really filter things right and the stomach's not digesting right, um, it just might put us in a frame of mind that we're not even understanding. It just feels like we can't get out of it. Right. So there's a lot of things to look at. It, actually, it's kind of fun to think that there's a lot of things to explore that we can try and see what works for us and then mm -hmm. just change some of the habit patterns that we have. Right. Which, and then know. like with any habit, hopefully once you've been able to you know, you know, start creating a healthier sleep habit that just like you were saying with the posture thing, mm -hmm. it starts to become a habit that you don't have yeah. to think as much consciously about. It starts to become more natural. Yeah. And, you know, like you said, the body wants to sleep. Yeah. So if we can help support it and, you know, help to identify some of these factors that are maybe preventing us from falling asleep mm -hmm. and take those factors out, that our body is naturally going to want to go ahead and snooze and snooze and snooze. We yeah. just have to, you know, kind of um, remove some of these things that are stopping it from yeah. relaxing down. Yeah. And we want to go to where we can dream, you know, where we can just really dream mm -hmm. and remember the dreams. Right. Because that's, that's a very important state to be in, you know. Um, a lot of people don't remember their dreams. I remember fragments of the dreams. Sometimes I remember them. But you know, I guess there's another whole little thing I can say is I understand that aquamarine, the, uh, the gemstone. That's aquam my birthstone. Oh, is it? Well, that's supposed to help you dream, <laughs> supposedly. Oh. I don't know. You put it under your pillow. But, you know, little Dreams. things like that sometimes are, um, to me, they might be totally weird and they might not have any scientific backing to them but sometimes it kind of tricks the mind yeah. and you know if somebody feels like buying an aquamarine and putting it under their pillow I'm I mean, gonna you know. try it I'm gonna <laughs> probably go by the crystal store today and get one because it's your birthstone it's, anyway. and it's my birthstone but That's you know beautiful. little things like that I mean you know play around with gemstones sometimes yeah. just little things because we just do that. And then, you know, once we start getting our sleep, we're going to notice that we might want to eat a little differently, too. Mm. And we do want to learn about the foods because a lot of the foods have so much stimula stimulating um, junk in them. <laughs> I can't even think of the words. But it's just there's so much additives in food mm -hmm. that we don't really know what it's doing to us, and it could be causing that. They, I just don't trust a whole lot out there. I've done too much I, I, you know, too much information almost turns you into a, like a really crazy person because, you know, I mean, you hardly dare eat anything because you understand how toxic things are, not only with mm. chemicals, but with, there, there's nanoparticles, there's all kinds of different things that, that can happen. Mm -hmm. And so we've got to begin to, as a human race, we've got to begin to guard our food and guard our water and guard the additives that they're doing and stop mm -hmm. these people from adding things into the water and right. stop and stop buying food that is using really horrific products. Yeah. I mean, Everything stuff. Everything from the preservatives, the artificial colors, the artificial flavors, the monosodium glutamate. I mean, you start... Yeah. I mean, and that can even be a whole topic for a podcast. Like, let's talk yeah. about all of the foods that we're eating that have a stimulant effect on the body. Yeah. You know, yeah. of course, you got your sugar. You got your excitatory toxins like yes. gl monosodium glutamate. Mm -hmm. um, so it's hard to sort through all of that. But, but the thing is, is to start somewhere. Mm -hmm. Start by thinking about connecting with your body. And you know what's funny is it's if you really pay attention like habit, like going to something to eat, if you just stop for just a minute and say to the body kind of however you want to do it, should I eat this? The first thing that comes into the body is probably going to be a no, but then the mind will override it because like in the case of, of candida overgrowth, which most people have candida, uh, that it's, uh, you know, the, the yeast infection, it's mm -hmm. there. Um, Usually it does overgrow, but how that stuff, it's like a foreign entity, actually, because what it does is when it gets to being certain numbers, it will give you a chemical response to, like, eat something that's going to feed it. Right. <laughs> and then it'll give you a response that, oh, that you feel so satisfied that you gave yourself that treat, but mm -hmm. you're actually feeding 
this entity, this beast, this thing inside you. So, you know, coming into that kind of a balance as well, there's so much we could talk about that, Mm -hmm. you know, in another podcast. But for starting to sleep, that is a factor we definitely have to begin to look at. But we also need to look at the electronics around our house. And we Mm -hmm. need to look at the um, just how we're going to lay down and how we're going to begin to take our attention and intention so our attention can become on our body on how stressed our feet are or how stressed our knees are how much tension we're holding in our hips or our back and then that can be you know the intention to looking the attention to looking there and the intention is to be able to relax enough to go into a nice deep sleep right so um those that intention attention is something that I got from John Lash and but I I like it it's Mm -hmm. it's a way to kind of really completely put you into a space where you're doing the right thing right and especially when you consider that normally our attention is everywhere else yeah you know what I mean we're thinking about tomorrow we're thinking about last week we're thinking about this other person you know Mm -hmm. so much of our attention is on everything other than well, how am I feeling right now? How's yeah. my back doing right now? Is there anything, any adjustment that I could make to help my neck feel more comfortable or yeah. something like that? You know, usually mm-hmm. our attention is everywhere else. Mm-hmm. So I love You're that right. idea of like bringing your attention inward. Um, yeah, with an yeah. intention to try to help the body relax and try to yeah. identify these things that are maybe like keeping you from getting into that relaxed state. Yeah. Uh, So you had mentioned herbs. Can you Mm -hmm. maybe just, you know, talk briefly about some of the different herbs you would recommend for sleep? Well, you know, um, I can't really recommend any, um, but the ones that I know that are uh, good for sleep, and herbs work differently with different people. Sometimes um, herbs have a lot of qualities that are similar, and they just work a little bit different with people. A lot of them are are adaptogens, which means that they kind of go to where the problem is. But uh, valerin is a good one that tends to help sleep. I would want people to research it. It's getting harder and harder to find things about herbs because they're narrowing down the information a lot about it, but you can still find it out there. Mm -hmm. Um, There's probably books might be a better um, way. Look for older books. Um, But uh, valerin or valerin... Valerian. Valerian. <laughs> yeah, no, I couldn't say for so. Yeah, valerian um, is a good, uh, that's a relaxing herb. Skullcap is a relaxing herb. Hops is a relaxing herb. You know, I have uh, a book, Back to Eden, that just lists tons of them in there. Kava is one that is a good muscle relaxer and all that. Um, some of them are stronger than others. Some of them have cautions that need mm-hmm. to be watched. Some of them shouldn't be taken in large quantities over large periods of time. Mm-hmm. And the thing about herbs is that if they're going to help you to relax, you can override it. You know, it's so it's not like a drug where you take and it just wipes you out, but you right. can override it. So it's a good idea to maybe, and I like the tincture form better than the pill because it gets in the s- system faster. Mm-hmm. But the, um, you know, you have to like take it and then, go to a relaxing like maybe get a book and or a magazine or something and or just something to look at a picture and while you're sitting in bed to just kind of relax down that way or mm. lay in bed and just put yourself in a situation where you're going to be able to start to relax or begin to lay down and think about your feet or whatever right. because you can override that you'll feel more relaxed mm-hmm. you can also do some of those herbs during the day just to keep you a little less on edge mm. um so I, I find I'm going back a little bit more back into the herbs. Um, I really like one brand of herb. I don't know if I can say it or not, but, yeah. oh, it's the Herb Farm brand, H-E-R-B-P-H-A-R-M. I really like that brand. It's mm-hmm. They're so, the integrity of that company is right. really amazing. And they used to have a really good manual out there, but, of course, that's been niched um, we have too many regulations and controls and right. um, things that, which if we, if more people as the numbers grow to want to have this information, the more we'll be getting it back. Right. So, um, but those are, those are some, just some ideas to do. Mm-hmm. Rescue Remedy is another one. It's a Bach flower. Um, I find that more helpful in like 
taking it like <laughs> during road rage episodes or something like that because <laughs> it can calm you down, but it's a vibrational type of thing. Okay. It's a Bach flower that comes in drops or it comes in spray or it comes in little tablets now and it comes in cream used to just be the drops but so Mm -hmm. that's another just idea and it works different with different people depending on you know just what's going on Mm -hmm. but there's a lot of things to try and really when you're going into more alternative stuff you just have to see what works for you right because there's a big potpourri out there for a lot of different options and not the same thing doesn't work for everybody right One size does not fit all. And that's the beauty of getting to kind of know ourselves better is we realize where our differences are, even though there's a lot of similarities with people. Mm -hmm. And so it's our responsibility to to enjoy those differences and find what works best for us, too. Right. And that might help us sleep. Mm -hmm. (laughs) I don't know. (laughs) know, Another thing that I'll take at night, this isn't uh, an herb, but I'll take magnesium Mm. at night. Are there... Is that something you can speak well, to? Well, you know, I, I don't, I've heard that before, and I've used magnesium for more muscle cramps, mm-hmm. but it probably does help. If it helps you with sleep, then I would, do you spray it on, or do you take it in a tablet? Um, there's something called magnesium calm. It's like a fizzy drink mm. that you make. Well, if it works for you, I would say, you know, if it doesn't have poison in it (laughs) you know if it's pretty clean Mm -hmm. I would say yeah anything that works for you um sometimes things work for a short period of time and you have to kind of find something different Mm. um I remember several times waking up with horrific leg cramps yeah and I know a lot of people who are they wake up in the middle of the night with a very bad leg yeah or um, charlie horse yeah and that's oftentimes um magnesium deficiency or dehydration Mm. But I know that spraying on that helps right. quite a bit. Interesting. But the dehydration, um, there's some stuff, too, that you can add to your water that are that is just um, electrolytes. It's not like the Gatorade that has other additives in it right. and stuff. But it's just stuff that you can just add. We can get that here in Austin, People's Pharmacy or Wheatsville or mm-hmm. different places. Um, So the electrolytes are important for the hydration, from what I understand. But I'm not really a nutritionist-type person. I just have basically my own experiences and what I've watched in other people. Mm -hmm. And I've seen a lot of really good. But, again, I just urge them to do their own thing, and then they report back to me what worked and what didn't. So, (laughs) And you actually have an electrolyte drink here with you today. (laughs) Yeah, I I do. Yeah, you noticed. Um, But, yeah, electrolytes are definitely a big topic that, you know, mm-hmm. that I've addressed before. And yeah. you're right, those um, drinks which are sold because they have electrolytes, your Gatorade, Powerade, etc., they're loaded with sugar. Yeah. A lot of times it's the high fructose corn syrup, which is maybe, I don't know, maybe worse, at least as bad as sugar. Yeah. Um, Red 40 and, mm. um, you know, brominated vegetable oil or these different weird chemicals they have to use. Yeah. Um, so I just always encourage people, you know, you don't need to have some kind of crazy fancy drink. Yeah, there's lots of different electrolyte tablets you can get. Mm-hmm. Um, or um, coconut water is one of my favorite That's beverages. One. Yeah. Great source of electrolytes. Yeah. Um, but you can get electrolytes from natural sources, fruits, vegetables, a little bit of lemon in your water. Mm-hmm. You know, there's um, lots of great ways to add electrolytes in without having to get all of those unwanted sugars. Yeah, and and you actually wonder if it's, if the electrolytes even have any purpose. (laughs) (laughs) I mean, you know, after all that other stuff is in there, you wonder what's really doing. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, that's right. And I think people should, yeah, pay attention to all of that. But that, Mm -hmm. you know, but we're kind of on the sleep thing. But, you know, magnesium, I, I think that's good, and I've heard people talk about melatonin. I've tried that, and that hasn't seemed to work for me. Mm. Um, I tried melatonin when I was flying over to India. I still had jet lag, oh, yeah. you know, so I don't know. Maybe I wasn't taking it right or something. Right. Um, but, again, if if it works for people, they should do it. But I want people to be cautioned that a lot of times – the market is putting a lot of claims for things out there Mm -hmm. that may or may not work. And they kind of blanket it in a one-size-fits-all kind of thing. Whereas 
we're just like a snowflake. We're just different than not the snowflakes that are, you know, <laughs> wilting and <laughs> needing blankets and all that, but the real snow <laughs> snowflakes. You know, they're all different designs. Right. And, um, you know, those different designs, it's, it's like we are all different designs. So mm-hmm. one size fits all just doesn't work. It just mm-hmm. never will. It just won't. Right. And as long as we have diversity, it's fo- so funny. They talk about diversity, this, diversity, that, and they're forcing all this diversity. But then when it comes to medical, one size fits all. You have the sniffles, you need this. You know, it's oh, like such there's a good point. no diversity in, in how we keep ourselves well. Mm-hmm. And, but that's our responsibility because right. those, that particular structure, that particular system is going to just try to profit, right? basically. I mean. And it's so true, you know, that, um, and I, I love that you gave that example too. Like in so many ways, we're taught to celebrate our differences and our diversity. But then when it comes to, you know, nutrition or health or whatever, in many cases, we're treated like, oh, you have this, then you get X, Y, Z, or you yeah. get this thing. And it's not really taken into account that our bodies are completely different. Yeah. Our lifestyles, our environment, uh-huh. our heritage, our background, mm-hmm. you know, from a dietary component, a lot of times um, in my health coaching, I'll tell the, you know, tell people the example, well, no, do you think that somebody who's living in Alaska Mm-hmm. is going to flourish eating the diet of someone who lives in the tropics <laughs> exactly. and vice versa. Like, and then, and mm-hmm. you know, that's kind of a good, I mean, granted that's an extreme, but it's a great kind of way of really it's recognizing. Distin- yeah. It's a distinction. Yeah. That we're all yeah. different and we're going to need different things. And just because something works for one person doesn't mean that it'll work for everyone. Yeah. Um, but then at the same time, just because something doesn't work for other people doesn't mean that it can't help you exactly. in your situation. Yeah. So. Yeah, we've gotten kind of off the rail in some of that, you know, because in one out of one side of the mouth, it's talking about diversity. But then out of the other side of the mouth, it's one size fits all. And that even includes what we're seeing now. That even includes how we're thinking. If mm-hmm. we think a different way than what... But we're supposed to be diverse. But if we think a different way, then we, we we're get somehow, in trouble. Yeah. <laughs> so it's kind of like, you know, we, maybe we should all just really start focusing on ourselves and find out our own hypocrisy there and start to use reason because things are getting kind of unreasonable out there and people aren't putting together. I mean, and I think this is a cause of no sleep and the additives and not taking care of ourselves. And mm-hmm. I mean, it's, it, but it's getting to where clear thinking is... <laughs> kind of a mm-hmm. <laughs> an endangered species. Right. So, yeah, but anyway, yeah, so let's pull it back into celebrating diversity but also being responsible for our diversity and figuring out what works for us when it comes to our health and quit asking for a one size fits all poison mm-hmm. health system that is going to just deteriorate. Right. And it's going to deteriorate everybody that's using that system as well mm-hmm. and reinvent it to something that's more responsible for right. our own selves and then helping others to try different things mm-hmm. that work mm-hmm. and utilize the best out of every system. Right. <laughs> so if I could ask you, you know, like, do you have a, a bedtime ritual? Like, are there things that you maybe mm-hmm. find that you typically do in the evening um, before bedtime that help get you ready for sleep? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> and I think just being, su- you know, like I said at the, at the beginning, mm-hmm. like you just strike me as such a calm and relaxed person. <laughs> you know, and I think it's a testament to how much um, our stress levels during the day mm-hmm. have a great deal of effect on how we're able to fall asleep at night. Yeah. And because you are, um, you know, managing your stress much better throughout the day. Yeah. Um, not that you don't ever feel stressed or feel, you know, those things coming on, but that you have a way of managing them enough so that when you do yeah. go to lay down at night, you're not feeling at the height of your stress response, you know? And, yeah, you know. yeah. That's, well, yeah. Because usually what I do is I'll sit and I'll catch up on a little bit on the computer and then I'll turn it off and unplug it. And sometimes I'll make something like, you know, 
just get some frozen blueberries or something and wait for it to thaw a little bit, crunch it up a little bit, maybe add some coconut water to it and make it like a smoothie thing and eat that. And then I'll just, you know, sometimes I'll take a hot bath if I feel like I'm not very tired. Mm. Um, and then I'll just, you know, do the normal face wash, <laughs> the teeth brush, all that stuff, you know, mm -hmm. and lay down and have a book or just turn the lights off and go to sleep. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> you know, I think that those, um, all those little elements that we kind of take for granted, you know, washing our face, brushing our teeth, you know, for mm -hmm. me, that is very much a part of my, um, of my bedtime ritual, you can mm -hmm. say. And even while I'm doing those things, I'm trying to already be, you know, thinking about trying to... Heading that direction. Yeah, getting yeah. <laughs> into a calmer state and just starting to notice that yeah. my, you know, my mind is going crazy. I'm thinking of all these things. And I'll even yeah. tell myself, Karina, there's always tomorrow. Yeah. Right now it's time to slow down. Yeah, just let them go. <laughs> yeah, and, we, and the other thing to check is that, you know, sometimes we'll feel like maybe we said something bad or we feel bad. You know, we have these feelings. And, you know, feelings are not really reality. Feelings are just a way they're great, and yet they're very much obstacles mm. in a lot of ways but to examine what it is exactly that might be the core of why the mind is still so active what is it that I feel like I did something wrong did I feel like you know like this person you know called me this or that or is fighting with me and you know it's just a silly this or that or whatever mm. um to just let all that stuff go, you know, I didn't do anything wrong. You know, if you didn't cause any harm right. physically to somebody, then if it's, why worry about if they might feel bad because that's their problem, right. you know, but we have to clear that out because we tend to take that on like, oh, it's my fault. Mm -hmm. Kind of like we have to play these guilt trips on ourselves, And that's a big underlying thing it, when we carry that kind of stuff around it's unnoticed usually yeah. but a lot of guilt a guilt will feel will move into fear and fear can turn into anger and we kind of get these three musketeers going and that emotional component also is going to interfere with sleep patterns because wow. it's stress and it's at a different level than what we might be picking up on. Mm -hmm. So if there's kind of this edginess, I always interpret it as there's, if there's kind of an edginess, I think about the day and I think, oh, well, you know, I said something, maybe I made this person da, 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 da. And then I'll think, well, you know what? Yes, that is the way the conversation went, but I personally didn't have any judgment about it. Mm. So if they feel bad about it, then I turn that around and I think hopefully they're going to think about you know, what they disagreed on or whatever this is. Mm -hmm. And hopefully that they're going to do that because I'm not going to carry that. I'm not going right. to carry the illusion or the idea that maybe I caused somebody their hurt feelings because what happened to sticks and stones may break my bones, but words would never hurt me. We've lost that. We mm -hmm. carry around words and feelings of, oh, I feel this and that, or, you know, I feel like you slapped me when you didn't really slap them you know right. it's like it's, it gets it just gets insane so that's another thing that we can check because by doing that we're going to help ourselves to grow you know into a better person mm -hmm. because we're not we're not gonna we're less likely to project those out onto somebody else mm -hmm. it, it may be my feelings if they do really feel bad they do but it's probably my feelings projecting that they're feeling bad right they could be they could have been really upset by what was said but mm -hmm. it am I going to make my feelings project that that's what's going on and then put right. a wedge between the next time we see each other mm -hmm. so it's another way of kind of keeping ourselves clear of and, and, and in a good vibration so everybody talks about this love stuff you know how can you love anything if you don't love yourself first and mm -hmm. I don't mean in a in a selfish egotistical way but how can we when we're riddled with all these emotions and projecting all these feelings mm. of ourself on others right. how can we really get into that space where we can just let what is so be what is so and then you know let everybody make up the stories they want to right. make up 
and deal with that, but keep our own self into what is so is what is so. And if we did blow it, then clean it up, you know? Right. Apologize. Mm-hmm. Admit it, you know? <laughs> yeah. Because then we're going to be able to be in the space where we're not always triggered. We're not always triggered when we're in that space because that's a space of calm because we're okay with ourselves. At least that's the way I see it. Mm-hmm. And then we can hop in the bed and go to sleep. Right. And I definitely think that, I mean... I can think of times that I've laid in bed, like replaying a conversation in my mind. Mm-hmm. And, oh, what did they mean by this? And I hope they didn't take the way that, oh, I didn't mean it this way when I said that. But man, now that I'm laying here thinking about it, it sounds like, um, and so it's an, it's an interesting yeah. piece. And it's definitely something that I think people can, uh, can relate to. <laughs> I've probably laid in bed. <laughs> I've done that. You know, thinking about <laughs> a conversation or an argument or something. Yeah. Um, sometimes I'll keep a, a little like notepad or something next to my bed, a little journal thing. Mm-hmm. And, um, if I'm laying there at night and I'm having those thoughts over and over again, and yeah. definitely if it's something like that I need to do the next day, I'll just like wake up and write it down on a list. But yeah. even those emotional things, mm-hmm. um, journaling about that for a little while can be very helpful. Oh, for you're me right. Well, like, that is a good thing because you get it out. Yeah. And I've heard that when you write it, not mm-hmm. like typing, but write it. When you write it, you're actually moving energy. Wow. Um, and the other thing that, that can be done that kind of reverse that would be to sit down and look at the day and say, I'm grateful for da-da-da. Yeah. And just write a list of, oh, I'm grateful that I'm breathing today. You know, I'm grateful there's still oxygen on the planet. You know, <laughs> it doesn't have yeah. to be that extreme. But, you know, I'm, I'm grateful that I had a nice day or I had a great conversation. Mm. I'm grateful that it's going to be fine I'm grateful that my feelings aren't going to get me down, you know, just get into like a grateful mode and write that before you go to bed, because that's a different kind of energy too. maybe write out what bothers you, but then write out more about the good things, because we have to keep raising our vibration. And there's a lot of talk about it. But then when I sit there and try to have a conversation with somebody, who is very strong about having it only one way. It's like, how in the world? There's no tolerance here. There's no desire for understanding. There's no desire for peace. There's just sitting in their little narcissistic, you know, it's, it's self-appointed intellect mm-hmm. <laughs> that they know it all. Right. When, you know, when they're just seething with all this, you know, you can just see the vibration off of them. It's nasty energy because they're they're just lost I mean you know it's kind of sad actually but if we want to expand ourselves we got to start flipping things and and by self-examining just from I mean it comes from just a very structural part just paying attention to the structure it's kind of like it reminds me of what Jordan Peterson said about organizing our life He said, if you want to organize your life, he said, start by organizing your room. Start by making your bed every day. Now, that's a whole different thing for moving out in the world. But for us to want to have peaceful sleep and have that, we need to start by cleaning up our our room, our Our structure. (laughs) Yeah, and getting the structure right and putting the foundation in right and, Mm. and beginning to learn and grow from that point. And emotionally starting to write out the good things that happened in the day or this didn't go that well but I can see positivity in it Mm -hmm. somehow you know Mm -hmm. that's hard to do I mean that is that's Mm -hmm. we're so programmed everything you turn on tv is negative and that's why another reason why not to turn on the tv you get a lot of negative input Mm -hmm. they don't have good conversations on these talk shows they just it's not usually very uplifting holler over each other and (laughs) But I love that idea of, of, of a gratitude list, you mm-hmm. know, at the end of the day. Um, there was uh, some neurological studies and they were looking at, you know, the, um, you know, what is actually happening in the brain when we think thoughts mm. of gratitude. Mm-hmm. Um, and they are looking at these different, you know, essentially that we get like a positive reward response when we're thinking of things that we're grateful for. And interestingly, what they found in this study was that even if you actually didn't think of anything, 
just the act of trying to think of something you oh, were grateful for really? would cause these, you know, changes in the in the oh, brain that's... function. Um, yeah, so even that's if fascinating. even if you're begrudgingly sitting there going, okay, Karina and Athena told me to make a gratitude list, and now I'm going to sit here and make a gratitude <laughs> list, just sitting there and writing, I'm grateful for the sky. Yeah. I'm grateful for the ground. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, whatever it exactly. is, it doesn't matter what it is that you come up with to be grateful for, but just the act it's a different of being energy. grateful has this incredibly positive in fact, it, yeah. impact on the brain. It just changes. Yeah, it changes. Well, that's a vibration, I, I would assume. And so it does change the vibration, vibration of the heart. It's hooking us into what's real, I think, mm-hmm. more so than what's not real. I mean, I mean, really, you know, mm-hmm. we can change a world with gratitude. <laughs> yeah. I think we can change a world more with gratitude than judgment. anything. Yeah. Which is what... Most what, of, you know, well, most that's of what, what we're, we're taught well, now. Is that's that's what it's all about. It's about fitting into the herd mind and, you know, just being a cow or following along. You know, it's humanity is too creative for that. And for mm. for the powers that be or for any institution to try to put us in a box, you know, that's not the way life is supposed to be for humanity. We're supposed to be out there creating We're supposed to be moving ourselves towards excellence. We're supposed to be wanting to learn more Mm -hmm. and be excited about not just being this drone mode of, you know, entertainment all the time, but stimulating our minds with new thoughts and new ideas. And, you know, that's where I see humanity wanting to move toward. Mm -hmm. But it's just a hard jump because the... It's like we've been in quicksand and we're like up to our armpits in quicksand Mm. and we don't really know, we can't really wiggle out of it too easily. So to figure out how to how to change things to make the quicksand go away, I don't, you know, it's a bad illustration, but it's like we're, we're stuck and we have to retrain everything that we know. Mm. And it's important that we do that too because I get a strong feeling that there's going to be some massive changes in the paradigm of just society itself. This resistance is so strong, and there's always resistance to change, that I really, really, really believe and actually kind of know that we have an incredible future for us if we can just get out of these systems and allow humanity to come into the excellence that we are mm. and the creativity that we are. But we can't do that till we make our bed every day, <laughs> till, we, <laughs> till we clean our own house, till we, you know, till we can go to bed and sleep well and where we don't have all these concerns, where we can start to eat fresh food and good food and breathe fresh water, I mean, breathe fresh air and <laughs> drink fresh water, <laughs> mm. all of that good stuff. So mm. I don't know, it, it, I get kind of expansive sometimes when I'm just talking because I see things in a really big way as how it can blossom mm-hmm. from just a small little effort, like a small little mustard seed can blossom into something really big if we just put our intention and attention upon what's important, which is ourselves Mm -hmm. in a positive way and in a giving way and in a kind way be kind to ourselves we will be kind to others Mm -hmm. I love that (laughs) (laughs) somehow it works right (laughs) and you know there's just um you know a great deal of our attention is is on other people and is on other things so I love this idea of you know just putting more attention onto ourselves mm-hmm. and and onto our self care and the things yeah. that we do like taking a hot bath or going to yoga class mm-hmm. or you know getting a massage you know for people with really high stress levels yeah. i think getting you know massage therapy on a regular basis mm-hmm. can really do wonders it to does. help them you know, reduce that overall stress and then help their sleep because you're training the body to yeah. get into that relaxed state almost yeah. or helping yeah. it become more comfortable to get into that state. Yeah, and where people have to get themselves is to where they are enjoying doing it, to where it's not like, oh, I got to go do this. It's where it's like, I get to go do this because it's going to help me make me feel better, mm-hmm. you know, instead of 
setting up a schedule and it's like, you know, not wanting to go to yoga class or not wanting to eat that food, but it's like, oh, I get to eat this or I get to go to yoga and have a gratitude experience with it and also frame everything that seems to go wrong is in just like a, a story, mm. you know. So the story is, oh, yeah, I went to work and I did everything wrong. Oh, well, that's a story for the day. <laughs> you know, tomorrow, <laughs> another chapter. But, right. you know, get it into gratitude and, and so we don't take life so seriously. I mean, it is serious, um, mm. but we don't have to drop all the joy. We can just, you know, we can just be more mature about it and mm -hmm. have fun and still understand that there is a time for seriousness and for that as well and be much more balanced. Mm -hmm. I think maybe that's the central theme is balance. the balance, you know, because yeah. the the stress response has a very, very important function. Mm -hmm. It's not like you would want your body to just have zero stress response at all. Yeah. But you have to have that balance between, you yeah. know, yes, the body has the stress response, but yes, the body can come back down from it because you don't want to be on either side of the spectrum. Yeah. If you actually needed those fight or flight responses, you definitely want them. Yeah. Um, but unfortunately, our, our our lifestyles nowadays kind of perpetuates that we're always in that high state of stress. Yeah, that's the problem is we're, we don't turn it off. Mm -hmm. we, we just don't turn it off. Yeah, when we are, you know, when we, we need them, we need them. And that's when they're going to function better for us, too. Mm -hmm. Um, but yeah, but just to be triggered, you know, just driving, we should, none of us should be triggered driving. We should all be able to drive relaxed, you know, and <laughs> let the other people be. And if we just, you know, not worry about, I mean, do be polite and all that kind of stuff. But, but it just take a lot of the worry and a lot of the fear and a lot of this other stuff out of it. Mm -hmm. But that's where we have to work on ourselves, as you well know, you know, if we're going to carry fear, we're going to carry it everywhere we go. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to be fearful that somebody's thinking about us because we, you know, have a broken fingernail or something like that. So it's, you know, it just compiles itself up to, mm -hmm. up to silliness. And, uh, but, you know, it's, it's a journey and it can be really fun. And then you can get older and still be active and, and really be joyful because I think a lot of older people boy, you know, older people can be really grumpy and, mm. you know, hard to be around if they're, and that's because they probably never like themselves, mm -hmm. you know? And then you have the, you know, the physical stresses that build and build and build, and mm -hmm. we just carry that physical stress, and yeah. it just keeps kind of compiling on top. You know, so many people, I think a lot of that grumpiness comes from the fact that they're, you know, living in a place of discomfort. Exactly. And, you know, I whether agree. it's, you know, they've got physical pain or, or, or years of emotional, you know, they say emotional baggage, which I think is kind of a strange term, but it's also, it's, mm -hmm. it's also fitting in the sense that like, if you think of yourself, like walking through the airport with 10 heavy suitcases, <laughs> one strapped over your shoulder, one over your arm, you got two rolly suitcases, yeah. you've got a big backpack, <laughs> you can, you can really clearly imagine how that literally weighs you down, Yeah, makes every single step you take that much harder. Mm -hmm. So whether it's through journaling or or talking to someone, mm -hmm. you know, talking with a therapist or something, you know, letting go of that emotional uh, upset or emotional stress we're carrying, yeah. combined with also doing something to take care of our physical body and, and yeah. maybe alleviating some of that physical stress, not only are you going to be feeling better day by day, but now maybe you won't be as grumpy yeah. <laughs> or as irritable uh, yeah. or whatever and it is. Right. You're absolutely right. And it's a total package of things that we, we should be focused. We should be taught how to, how to live like this rather than how to t pass tests. You know, I mean, we really should be taught a lot differently. Yeah. But there's one thing that I will mention here about uh, talking to like therapists and that. I want to caution people a little bit um, just from the training that I was in is one of the things that I was 
taught in the somatoemotional release work, which is out of the cranial work, is that, and some of the people that are doing this work I have heard don't pay attention to this, but when we're trying to find out what emotion it is that's holding us back, I may see, let's say that you're on my table, I may see and really get the emotion that it is that you're dealing with, and it's right there really clear. But as soon as I speak that emotion, I prevented you from finding it because the key is the person, you've got to find that emotion that's that irritant. Mm. I can maybe see it in you or other people can maybe see it in you, but until you can really identify it, because that will take you out of any denial about it. Once you identify it, then you have a choice of saying, I either want it there, I don't want it gone, or I want it gone. Mm-hmm. And I've seen people remove some of the deepest rooted emotions that have, I mean, seriously, um, just a little quick story. One woman was horrifically abused as a child, mm-hmm. and it was in a particular home that now the people had passed away and she needed to go back to that home. It was in the country somewhere. And her sister and all this. Well, she had been working with a therapist for a couple of years, but she still had a lot of problems. Nothing seemed to really have been effective. Mm-hmm. And so she, when she first came to me, she was just this litany of things that had been told to her. But what I noticed in her body is that there was a repeated pattern that had not been broken, and that was she would kick with one leg and she would push away with the other uh, with the hand and she would turn her head away and that was a repeated pattern that kept happening over and over and over again so it dawned on me that you know something she hadn't really had much effective therapy because this repeated pattern should be done but it was talk therapy so it's like they don't deal with the body so it was like okay so let's get into this as soon as I stopped the repeated pattern in her body She had to start recognizing emotions. Mm. And she got off that table after three sessions, and she said, I didn't think it would be that easy. Mm -hmm. She said, I'm ready to go back to that house, and I'm ready to deal with everything. And it was because she was allowed, by holding those repeated patterns, it forced her to look at that emotion. And because I didn't tell her what emotion she was experiencing or Mm. I was guessing at, it was the emotion, but sometimes I can be wrong in that, so I would be giving them wrong information. So she found that, and the next time she came, she had no repeated pattern. She worked a little bit higher in it, and then the third time, she was ready to go. I haven't seen her since. That was about two years ago. Wow. And so it's that that's the determination. That's the beauty of humanity, that when we're really determined to do something, we really want to clear it out, we can But we also have to remember that we have to seek the help that's going to give us, again, everybody's different, and there's a lot of people out there doing this stuff. My guide is always how much is a person working on themselves. If if I'm going for somebody that's working in the area of diet and they don't look like they're doing anything with their own diet, then I don't really want to be guided by them. Mm-hmm. And same with if someone's working with stress or something like that, and they're stressful, I don't want to really be around that either. So, you know, it's again, it's a responsibility of ourself to find that. And we should talk to people, but we have to be sure that we're talking to people that are going to help forward us instead of bringing their own opinions mm-hmm. on us or pretending like they can help us when they're not giving us the rope that we need to figure out how to climb it, right. you know. And I, I don't, I'm not saying that there's anything wrong out there. I'm not making anybody wrong out there. I'm just saying that there's a lot of different intentions yeah. <laughs> out there. So put your attention on what kind of intention you have and find the attention of those people, mm-hmm. you know, that they'll give you that, what you need right. out there. And um, don't be afraid to ask questions and don't be afraid to you know, you know, just say no if you find that somebody isn't right the right fit. Right. I'm never offended by any of that because, you know, one size doesn't fit all. Mm-hmm. And I think that that little, you know, anecdote is great, uh, you know, evidence that the 
the physical and the emotional are highly intertwined. Highly so, intertwined. So, you know, if you're if if it is the emotional component that's maybe feeling like it's keeping you awake at night or or keeping in, you in that perpetual mm, state of stress, mm-hmm. that you recognize that, you know, the emotional component isn't just in the mind. Mm-hmm. It also can have these physical aspects too. So what are we yeah. doing to care for the physical body? And yeah. what can we do to maybe, uh, you know, yeah, working with a practitioner you mm-hmm. know, like yourself as an example, that's going to maybe be able to address some of those physical components too, so that you're not, yeah. you know, just, just doing the one side of the th- of, of the thing and yeah. then staying perpetuated in the problem. And yeah. maybe that's the take home message is if you have tried <laughs> something and it's, and it's supposed to work quote unquote, mm-hmm. whatever, but if it's not working for you, that's okay. Mm-hmm. Look outside. Maybe there's something else. What is another component you could try? Yeah. Um, so we live so much in this kind of instant gratification. Yeah, we thing. do. We you know, do. we feel like there should be one answer Mm-hmm. Or one pill that, and we it should take. have been yesterday, <laughs> right? Right. There's going to be this one thing, and I'm going to start taking this thing, and then overnight, it's going to resolve all my problems. Yeah. And it just, it just kind of ignores that, that you know our bodies are more complex than that, mm-hmm. um, our minds are more complex than that, and then like you had said earlier, we're all different. Yeah. So maybe what ends up you know, being the thing that works best for you, Mm -hmm. maybe that works for other people, or maybe it's really just what works for you, but that we accept that. And we, you know, don't, as I see a lot of times, it seems that people are frustrated if they try something and it doesn't help them. Yeah. And I think, well, just because it didn't work for you, doesn't mean that it can't work for anyone. Like we'll yeah. see this a lot in the, you know, YouTube comments, for example. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, this doesn't work, so this is just all hogwash. And yeah. it's like, well, just because it didn't work for you doesn't mean that yeah. it couldn't be beneficial to someone else. And well, yeah, versa. and sometimes the attitude coming in, that's already an attitude that it's not going to work. So, you know, mm. people have to give it a chance. It's it's a great lesson in, in being patient with yourself. Mm. It's a great lesson in, in learning how the body actually takes it's time to correct. I mean, some people have gotten their stuff in a wad, you know, for years, and they want it unwadded, you know, overnight. It doesn't work that way, Mm. but it can be really fast. And if a therapist is really attending the client's needs, it should be able to move things through at a fairly quick pace. In other words, from day one to day two, there should be something that people are noticing. Mm-hmm. Not that it is necessarily even just a huge amount, right. but they should be seeing steps at their own pace. And what usually happens is after so many steps, then it starts to get where you know, they're farther and farther apart. And that's one of the downsides, I think, with a lot of people who are in my position of being self, more self-reliant, um, not picking up paychecks, is that they want people to keep returning. Mm. But the idea is really to get them to where they don't need to return as often, but more like just for maintenance mm. or something like that, which means that it's a whole different ball game. because f- just in my own experience from massage therapy where people would come in every month because they just were dealing with their stress instead of actually changing the pattern of the stress, um, which is fine. I mean, they should have massage therapy. It's a good thing to do. Um, But when people actually change their whole perception and perspective on things about themselves or about what they thought or and have changed that, they find that they don't need to be maintained Mm -hmm. as often because Mm -hmm. they're in better control and the body's functioning better from structure all the way to function emotionally as well as physically mentally you know as well and it's it's a pretty fun journey to be on Mm -hmm. I mean it really is it's a lot more fun than pursuing inanimate (laughs) objects (laughs) as the main focus of our identity Well, Athena, I just want to thank you so much for sharing this. Are there any other last uh, (laughs) thoughts on sleep that you want to share? Well, I hope everybody can find their sleep um, because it is important. Mm -hmm. So even if counting sheep (laughs) works, but no, take a look at the, and take a look at the foods that you might eat right before bed because the stimulant 
stimulation in foods might be yeah. something to pay attention to. I didn't really mention that before. And yeah, start at the body. Just get to know yourself. Get to know yourself. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's nobody more important in the world than yourself. From a non-egotistical point, (laughs) from a humility point of view, Mm -hmm. that's where our power is found. And that's where our, our, you know, greatness, our excellence, our beauty and all that is found in that humility. Mm -hmm. And we're just here learning and growing and we have talents and we should be proud of them. And so let's focus on those. I love that. (laughs) Celebrating our talents, celebrating what makes us unique, and hopefully celebrating that this podcast has helped you. Yes, hopefully, (laughs) hopefully. Helped you get a better night of sleep. (laughs) Athena, I cannot thank you enough for sharing all of this with us. And And let's um, hope that they got through the podcast. Yeah. (laughs) Because I know my voice takes people to sleep. (laughs) Let's hope they made it to the end. Well, you know, sometimes (laughs) I've seen people you know, uh, comment, you know, oh, yes, the voice is so relaxing. And well, but I but I can't stay awake to the end. And I think, well, next time you listen, just start it at the place where you fell asleep last time. And eventually you'll get through. Yeah. And you know, what's funny is I've always said, you know, when I read those comments for the first time, I thought, you know, it's a good thing that my job involves people sleeping, because otherwise it could be very offensive to some people, especially if they're snowflakey types, you know. Oh, my God, they fell asleep. They're not listening to me. It could be a real <laughs> crusher, but it's actually a compliment. So Yes, and I definitely can sympathize with that as well. It's um, funny. <laughs> but I think that, you know, it's, it's the tone of the voice, but I also think that your intention comes through. Oh, thank and you. So it's interesting for you to speak about the intention, um, mm-hmm. because I think that, I mean, at least for me, going back uh-huh. and, and listening to your videos and, and things like that, like your true intention to care for people and mm-hmm. to help them, um, that comes through in everything that you do. And oh, thank you. Yeah. So yeah. we're just so appreciative to have you share that here with us on the podcast. Well, thank you. I'm honored and uh, I'm glad to be with you as long as I have been. I'm glad to be back. Definitely. <laughs> well, okay. We, I want to thank you all so much for tuning in to this podcast. You can find the video version of this podcast, along with hundreds of other health and wellness videos, on wellnessplus.tv. You'll also find a variety of Athena's videos. (laughs) So I hope you will check us out there. Thank you so much for listening, and we will see you again next time. Head over to wellnessplus.tv or become a Patreon supporter at patreon.com slash psychetruth. All of the links are available for you down in the description below. And if you enjoyed this content, be sure to subscribe and click that notification bell. We at Wellness Plus specialize in all things health and wellness ranging from yoga and fitness to massage and ASMR. Whether you are looking to target specific areas of tension or want to enhance your general self-care routine, we provide the tools you need to feel better, look better, and live better. We have courses for every level, whether you're just starting out or you're a seasoned pro. Our courses provide a wide range in difficulty to accommodate your evolving flow. Welcome back to Yoga with Jess. We are going to break down some really essential postures. We are going to rock out with some of the most essential ab exercises that you need to have the abs that you've always dreamed of. I've blended techniques to help you connect with students and you can be a rock star teacher. Wellness Plus is available on your phone, tablet, or TV. Join Wellness Plus today and get your first seven days free.